So I want to begin by saying that none of us is completely free of the responsibility to assess and respond to the risk of suicide. This is something that we all need to do uh, in, our, in our clinical practice. Interestingly, surveys have shown that between 20% and 40% of therapists lose a client to suicide. That's a significant number of therapists. And not surprisingly, this is one of the worst professional experiences a therapist can have. In fact, in my own private practice, I've had several therapists come to me as clients to deal with their feelings after having lost a client to suicide. So I'm certainly uh, very aware of what those feelings can be uh, for a therapist. It is an extremely, extremely difficult uh, situation. So uh, please, if you are listening and that has been your experience, uh, please know that it is well known how difficult that is. So that's one of the reasons why uh, evaluating and responding to a suicide risk includes every aspect of our ethical and our clinical decision making. It's an ethical issue, it's a clinical issue, and it really does rely on our ability to make good decisions. So I'm going to be talking about uh, a number of factors, of risk factors for suicide. Uh, that, are, that would be helpful to you to know about. But it's also important to know that two or more factors can interact. So although someone may have two factors that are low risk, the risk overall could be high, much, much higher. So just because someone has one or even two low risk factors, there are many other important things to consider as well. So these are really just general guidelines. It's not a checklist. It's not a checklist to look at the factors and to say, um, you know, well, this person only has one factor or has three, uh, three low-risk factors. We really have to think about this in a very clinical way and not in, in a mechanical-type manner.